What's up guys, welcome back to another video. We're gonna get right into it. What Pokemon should you use your Elite Charge and Elite Fast TM on in Pokemon Go? Let's get into it. So first of all, if you don't know what a Legacy move is, what an Elite Charge or an Elite Fast TM is, or how to get Elite Charge and Elite Fast TMs, then I'm gonna leave a link below to a video and card it up here. Please be sure to watch that video so you understand what these items are, what Legacy moves are, so you understand what we're talking about in this video. First of all, I'm gonna link below this website, which is a complete list of every Pokemon and every legacy move in Pokemon Go. So you can go ahead and scroll through this and take a look at the long list of every single Pokemon and all of its legacy moves. What, what are the options for you pretty much? Now, before I get into this and talk about what are the best legacy moves for PVP and raids, because I'm going to separate them since you do want different moves for the two different circumstances. I want to talk about another method to go ahead and get legacy moves on your Pokemon. So you can go ahead and save your elite charge gems and we can pretty much nullify half these Pokemon since there's another way to get legacy moves on them. I'm going to link below as well this article here which will list every single community day event that has happened in the past and every single exclusive community day move that has happened in the past. Pokemon Go will sometimes create random events in which they will allow us to evolve the second stage into the third stage evolution of a Pokemon and learn their past community day move. Remember it always needs to be the second stage into the third stage to get the community day move. The only way to usually get these community day moves is by actually evolving the Pokemon. There has been an instance in the past where we can just regular TM on special moves onto Pokemon. For example, I believe the Luminous Legends X event. Yeah, for example, here it says Dragonite and Salamence will be able to learn certain attacks during the event, evolve a Dragonair or use a Charge Cham on Dragonite to teach it Draco Meter and evolve a Shield Gone into a Salamence or use a Charge Cham to teach it Outrage. And as you can see, if we come back to the list of Community Day Pokemon, we have Dragonite Community Day here, which it could learn Draco Meteor, which was a legacy move for Dragonite. And right here, April April 13th was Bag on Community Day in which you could teach Outrage if you evolved a Shield Gone into a Salamence. And obviously with this information, we now know that random events in the future, although we don't know when they're going to happen, Pokemon Go might allow us to get pretty much any legacy move on this list of past Community Day Pokemon. For example, Electabuzz into Electivire to learn Flamethrower, Rhyhorn into Rhyperior to learn Rock Wrecker. Any Pokemon on this list, we do have the chance to get its legacy move without having to use an Elite Charge Cham if we have not gone ahead and evolved it into the final evolution. So I want to make sure you guys do is come take a look at this list and any of the Pokemon here that I will mention that are worth getting. Make sure you don't evolve them all the way into their final evolution and hold on to them in case we get special events in the future. Now you might be like, when are these events coming? And obviously we have no idea. I believe the Luminous X event was the last event we were able to get it and that was a pretty long time ago. But there is one event that we know that happens every year where we can go ahead and get some of these Community Day moves. In comes December Community Day. If you don't know in December Pokemon Go doesn't actually have a specific Pokemon in the community day. instead they take all the Pokemon from that year and put it into the community day all at once. Not only do you have the chance to catch any of the community day Pokemon you missed during that event but also they give us the chance to get the community day moves on any Pokemon from that year and then any Pokemon from the year before. So for example this December community day you will be able to evolve any of the middle evolutions into the final evolutions to learn their community day legacy move from 20 21 and 2020. So we have pretty much, I believe that's going to be 22 different Pokemon we can get legacy moves on. If you come back to this article, for example, we can take a look at all the 2020 community day Pokemon and all the 2021 community day Pokemon and pretty much any of the legacy moves here along the exclusive move tab. For example, Gyarados with Aqua Tail. If you have some Magikarps and you want to get Gyarados with Aqua Tail, you can just hold on to it. And then I believe in December community day, we will have the chance to go ahead and evolve Magikarp into Gyarados during a specific time frame to get Aqua Tail Gyarados. You need to make sure that you're saving pretty much any of these past community day Pokemon first or second tier evolution. Don't evolve them into the last tier in case we ever do get special events in which you can go ahead and get them, saving you elite fast and elite charge TMs. But with this being said, let's take a look at what Pokemon to use your elite fast and elite charge TMs on so you can get the best use of your TMs. First, we're going to talk about raids. Okay, so starting it off here, we have Venusaur with Frenzy Plant. Obviously, Frenzy Frenzy Plant is one of those community day moves, so I don't really recommend using Elite Charge Champs to get this move on Venusaur. However, if you already have a Venusaur and it's very high IVs and it's pretty much impossible at that point to do the method I talked about, then you can use that move. We also have 
Charizard. Charizard for raids is going to need Blast Burn specifically when you're using Mega Charizard is a great raid Pokemon. So it's 100% needed to have Blast Burn on your Mega Charizard. So if you do have a high IV Charizard and you don't have Blast Burn on it yet, then definitely a contender. Same goes with the Blastoise with the Hydro Cannon. But again, those three starters better off to evolve them to get their moves. Mega Beedrill, if you're using it as a bug type attacker, wants to have Bug Bite as its fast move. Now it's really not necessary and it doesn't make a big damage buff, but it's just to note that Bug Bite is actually the preferred bug type raid move for Mega Beedrill and that is a legacy fast move. Same goes with Pidgeot here, Gust, legacy fast move Gust. If you're using a Mega Pidgeot, that's the preferred fast move for Mega Pidgeot, but again, it doesn't make a huge damage difference. That is just if you have a billion elite fast TM. Those two, by the way, are not community moves, so you have to actually use elite TMs to get them. Now we got Gengar. If you're using Mega Gengar in raids or as a raid attacker, Lick, again, is the preferred ghost type move for raids. However, again, it is not, doesn't make a huge damage difference between Lick and Shadow Claw, but technically Lick is preferred. Also, if you do want to use Mega Gengar as a dark type or a psychic type raid attacker, Dark Pulse and Psychic are two legacy charge moves on Gengar in which they can turn Mega Gengar into a decently viable dark type and psychic type raid attacker. However, again, it's really not that worth it for these moves. I just thought I'd mention them. Now, taking a look at Zapdos, and specifically, I want to talk about Shadow Zapdos. Shadow Zapdos is actually a decent electric type raid attacker really up there, but you need to have Legacy Thundershock on it. This is a necessary fast move to have on Shadow Zapdos if you're using it as an electric type raid attacker. Regular Zapdos is really not as good as an electric type raid attacker, but again, Thundershock is the preferred move for Zapdos, whether that be Shadow or non-Shadow. Same goes here with Moltres. Moltres is a deadly flying type raid attacker in its Shadow and non-Shadow form, but again, Sky Attack is a necessary move to have. I definitely recommend using Elite TM to get Sky Attack on your Moltres. Taking a look at Mewtwo, Psy Strike and Shadow Ball are two amazing things to use your Elite Charge TMs on. Mewtwo or Shadow Mewtwo, of course, Shadow Mewtwo is going to be the better option for raids, but to have it at the best form as a Psychic type raid attacker, you're going to want to have Psy Strike on your, your Mewtwo or Shadow Mewtwo. And you can even use Mewtwo as a Ghost type raid attacker if you have Shadow Ball. But again, these two moves are legacy moves on Mewtwo. And if you want to use Mewtwo as a raid attacker, they're definitely needed. A Tyranitar, if you're going to be using it as a Rock type raid attacker or Shadow Tyranitar, you're going to need Smackdown on it. Now, Tyranitar, of course, is part of those community day Pokemon I did talk about, so it's better to just save them and evolve for it. Smackdown is definitely a needed move as a rock type raid attacker for Tyranitar or Shadow Tyranitar. Preferred Shadow Tyranitar, of course. Sceptile, Blaziken, and Swampert. If these three ever do get their megas in Pokemon Go, of course, you're going to want Frenzy Plant, Blast Burn, and Hydro Cannon. But again, you can evolve for these Pokemon. So that's just something to note for the future. Now, Salamance. If you're using Salamance as a dragon type raid attacker and Shadow Salamance and Salamance is an amazing dragon type raid attacker, you need Outrage. Again, this is part of the community day bundle that we talked about, but that is a necessary move as well as Metagross. I can't stress enough. If you have a Metagross and it doesn't know Meteor Mash, it is a completely useless Pokemon. A Metagross without Meteor Mash is like, you know, it's just, it, it doesn't do any damage. So be sure to get Meteor Mash on Metagross. This is part of those community Pokemon I talked about. So I recommend evolving to get this move. But if you already have like 100% IV with Metagross without Meteor Mash, then definitely Elite TM that. Hurricane on Rayquaza. Now, Hurricane on Rayquaza is the preferred flying type move if you're going to use Rayquaza as a flying type raid attacker. And Rayquaza is a decent flying type raid attacker. However, you can also go with, I think it's Aerial Ace on Rayquaza and it still does a decent amount of damage. So this is not a necessary move, but this is technically the premier move to have. Garchomp with Earth Power. If you're going to use Garchomp as a ground type raid attacker, Earth Power is by far the preferred option compared to Earthquake for raids in terms of raid attacker. However, you can still use Earthquake, although Earthquake is definitely not the better move. It is a option if, you know, you don't have Earth Power Garchomp. It's not the end of the world to use Earthquake. Now, Rock Wrecker Rhyper is an absolute menace in terms of Rock type raid attacker. This is one of the best Rock type raid attackers all around. And to get Rhyperior as a Rock type raid attacker, you need to have Rock Wrecker on this Pokemon. Of course, it is part of the community bundle I talked about. So it's always better to evolve Rhyhorns into Rhyperiors during special events to get this move. That pretty much does it for raid attackers. Of course, there's only a, you know, number of them that you really need, legacy moves that you really need to make the top raid Pokemon as most raid 
great Pokemon. Don't actually need legacy moves, but let's get into the best legacy moves for PvP. What are the best Pokemon to use your Elite Charge and Elite Fast TM on so you can have the best Pokemon for PvP? Now I'm gonna get this right out of the way. Any starter, whether that be the Grass, Fire, or Water starter, for example, Venusaur, Charizard, or Blastoise, always needs to have Frenzy Plant, Hydro Cannon, or Blast Burn if you're running it in PvP. It's a must have on these Pokemon. Swampert, Meganium, any Pokemon, these moves are just so strong to have on your starters. Of course, all the starters are part of the community day bunch, so you can go ahead and evolve to get it. Just make sure you have those on your PvP Pokemon. Those are always gonna be a good option to use your Elite Fast Sam or Elite Charge Sam on if you already have a really high IV one and you need that move. But getting into it here, other moves you can run is gonna be Dragon Breath on your Charizard in the Ultra League. A great move to have on Charizard in the Ultra League specifically because of the amount of dragons that are there. You can evolve this Pokemon to get that move if there is a special event. Beedrill and Shadow Beedrill have recently had some decent play in the Great League. So Drill Run, which is a community move for Beedrill, is definitely a fun one to run in PvP and an option to run if you have a really good Shadow Beedrill. Gust on Pidgeot. If you guys don't know, Pidgeot has been banned from PvP recently because of its new move Feather Dance lagging the game and all that but if you are running Pidgeot Gust is definitely essential it's pretty much like incinerate for flying type so if you have a Pidgeot and you're running in PvP definitely an option to run Gust on. A champ recently got his community move and he learned Payback. Payback has some play in the Ultra League on Machamp to hit Cresselia's and Garatine Altered. Although I really don't recommend Elite TMing these moves again because it's part of the community bundle that's just something to note. Dugong. Dugong in the Great League is known as the double legacy beauty. To run a Dugong in the Great League you need to have Ice Shard, which is the legacy fast move, Icy Wind, and as well as Water Pulse as a second charge move. So Dugong is definitely an expensive Pokemon to run since it needs to have Ice Shard and Icy Wind. But when you do put these put moves on this Pokemon using your Elite Tems, it's definitely one to get. And this is not part of the Community Day Bundle. So this one, you're gonna have to use your Elite Fast and Elite Charge Tems on to get. And it's definitely a pretty good Pokemon. Now coming back to Gengar here, for PvP, the only necessary move to have on a Gengar is gonna be Shadow Punch, which is a Community Day move so you can evolve to get it. It was from 2020. If you don't have that move yet and you have a really good IV Gengar for PvP in specifically the Ultra League, then put Shadow Punch on. Alolan Marowak in the Great League. If you've never run into one of these, these things are deadly. It did have a raid day in which Shadow Bone was an introduced legacy move on this Pokemon. Definitely a great one to have. You don't need it. You can run Shadow Ball instead of Shadow Bone. However, Shadow Bone is a really good move to have as well. So I'd recommend having an Alolan Marowak with Shadow Bone and without Shadow Bone. Licky Tongue, specifically XL Licky Tongue in the Great League has been an absolute absolute menace, but to run it, you need to have Body Slam, which is actually a legacy move on Licky Tongue. Using Elite Charge Jam on this Pokemon is great if you have the resources. Obviously, don't use an Elite Charge Jam if you don't have an XL Licky Tongue already built, but if you do, then Body Slam is a great option for it. Triple Legacy Sea King. Now, this is more of a meme Pokemon and only has play in special cups. Poison Jab is a fast move. Drill Run and Icy Wind as charge moves make Sea King a decent Pokemon to run in special cups in PvP. It's super expensive. You have to use two Elite Charge Shams and one elite fast TM, but that's just something to note. Triple leg CC King can have play sometimes. Now, Gyarados in the Great Ultra and even the Master League needs to have Aqua Tail to have play. This is, of course, part of the community day bundle and you can evolve to get this move. But if you don't have this move on your Gyarados is already and you have them evolve, then it might be one to consider using Elite Charge Sham on as this is a great move to have for PvP and definitely essential. Lapras as well in PvP Ghost. You always want to have Ice Shard, which is the legacy fast move on Lapras or Shadow Lapras if you have one of those. So if you want to run a Lapras in PvP, definitely use an Elite Fast TM on it to get Ice Shard. Then as for charge moves, you can either run Surf and Skull Bash, or you can even run Ice Beam. Some people I've heard run Ice Beam on their Laprases, which is of course a legacy charge. So you can use a TM on that. Those are just options for you, but an essential for Lapras is always going to be Ice Shard. Articuno and Shadow Articuno, whether that be in the Great League, Master League, or Ultra League. Specifically, I think it has play in the Ultra League. Needs to have Hurricane on it. Definitely essential move to run on Articuno. So if you have Articunos and you didn't catch them during a special event where they came with Hurricane, then that is one to consider. Also coming back to the Zapdos and Shadow Zapdos. Shadow Zapdos is actually a decent closer in, I believe, the Great League and the Ultra League. Needs Thundershock on this Pokemon. You can't really run a Zapdos without Thundershock, whether that be in raids or PvP. And coming back to the Mewtwo. Specifically, you always need to have Strike on a Mewtwo when you are running in PvP. Specifically, the Master League is the only place Mewtwo has played.
play, but people like to run double legacy Mewtwo. It's very common to have Shadow Ball on your Mewtwo when you're going up against other Mewtwos, but I've even seen people sometimes running moves like Ice Beam, Focus Blast, and other things on their Mewtwo. It all depends on how you want to play, but Side Strike is definitely necessary for PvP and Shadow Ball if you'd like. Same goes with Armored Mewtwo as well. If you're running that, you need Side Strike. Here are three starters, which again, you need to have these moves if you're running them in PvP. Politoed has been recently doing very well in PvP. Now you can run Politoed with either Weather Ball and Blizzard or Weather Ball and Earthquake. And Earthquake is a legacy charge move on Politoed. Now Earthquake really helps it out, specifically in the Great League going up against Pokemon like Azumarill, being able to hit it for neutral damage, but also makes it harder to go against Pokemon like Altaria. So it really depends on if you want to run Earthquake or Blizzard or just have one of each. Earthquake is definitely an option for you guys who love Politoed in the Great League or Ultra League. Umbreon, Last Resort, and Psychic. La Umbreon is deadly in the Great League and the Ultra League. Now you have two options on your Umbreon now with the recent Puny Day. For charge moves, you can run Foul Play and Psychic or Foul Play and Last Resort. Now with Psychic, it'll help it out against some of the fighters when it's going up against, but Last Resort will help it up against some of the more neutral matchups against like some dark type Pokemon like a Mirror Match. So those are your two options. I recommend having both built, two for Great League and two for Ultra League. But again, these are moves that, that were taught during Community Day. There will be an opportunity in the future to get Umbreon with Last Resort and with Psychic in the future, just be patient. Now Lugia with Arrow Blast. Arrow Blast is essential if running Lugia in the Master League. This recently came out as a legacy move through raids. If you don't have this move on your Lugia and you're running in the Master League, what are you doing? Make sure you have Arrow Blast. Same goes with Earthquake on Ho-Oh. You need to have Earthquake on your Ho-Oh when running it in the Master League. Earthquake and Brave Bird are the preferred charge move move sets. So make sure you TM one onto your Ho-Oh, whichever Ho-Oh you're using for the Master League if you don't have it yet. Again, three starters in which you are if you're running them, you're gonna wanna make sure you have these starter fast moves, which you can get from the Community Evolutions. Now Shift Tree with Bullet Seed. Bullet Seed is the exact same thing as the move Snarl and Shift Tree can learn Bullet Seed and Snarl. So it really doesn't really make a big difference if you either run Bullet Seed or Snarl. If you have a Bullet Seed one already from the Community Day, then you're already set, but you can also run Snarl. It really depends on, you know, what you're gonna be seeing more. You're gonna be seeing more water types, maybe more ghost types, depends. Not really worth using an Elite Charge Gem. I'd definitely evolve for this one. Synchronoise on Gardevoir. Now, if you're ever gonna use Gardevoir in PvP, I don't really recommend it. It's not very good. It's very frail. If you are running it, you're gonna wanna make sure you have Synchronoise on it. That's all I'm gonna say. Flygon as well. Flygon in PvP is not the amazing. I have had really fun with it and some fun Pokemon to run, but it's not like top meta. But if you are running it, make sure you have Earth Power, which is a community move so you can evolve for it. But that's just something you need to have as well as Altaria with Moonblast. Moonblast helps out Altaria a bunch. In PvP does great damage. It's not the end of the world if you don't run Altaria with Moonblast because most of the time you're just gonna be using Dragon Breath and Sky Attack and you can have Dragon Pulse as a second charge move if you don't have one with Moonblast. This is a community day move as well so you can just get this one from Evolution. Metagross with Meteor Mash. Like I said before, if you don't have Meteor Mash on Metagross, it's completely useless. So when you are running Metagross in the Master League, since that's the only place people will run it, make sure you have Meteor Mash. Fire Punch on Groudon as well is essential to have if you're running Groudon in the Master League and Groudon is amazing in the Master League, make sure you have Fire Punch on it. You need that move to bait. Fire Punch Groudon is definitely one recommended to use your Elite Fast TM on. Three starters, which again, you need the legacy moves to run. Roserade has recently had great play in not only the Great, the Ultra and the Master League and the Master League Premier Cup. This Pokemon is great with its recent community move where it learned Bullet Seed and Weather Ball Fire. So those are two legacy moves, fast and charge. And of course, this is a community move, so you can evolve to get it in the future if an event comes, but this is essential moves to have on your Roserade when running it in PvP. We also have Garchomp here with Earth Power. Now, Earth Power is not always gonna be the preferred move for PvP on Garchomp. Sometimes you wanna run with Sand Tomb, sometimes you wanna run with Earthquake. So I recommend having yourself one version of a Master League Garchomp with Earth Power, but it might not be always the one you wanna run. It just really depends on your team composition and how you wanna play your Garchomp. Rhyperior with Rock Wrecker. I haven't really seen a lot of Rhyperiors in Master League, but I have heard of people using them and Rock Wrecker is definitely a essential move to have when running a Rhyperior in PvP. Vesalia in the Great League specifically, and even in the Ultra League, running Grass Knot is very good against those Swamperts, Azumarils, and things like that. I don't think you need to have Grass Knot on your Cresselia. Maybe in the Great League, you definitely really want to have it, but in the Ultra League, I think you have more options to run. But Grass Knot is a move to put on your Cresselia if you're running one for PvP. With this move, Cresselia can be absolutely deadly. That is an option for you as well. We got two starters as well here with their legacy moves. Make sure you're using them. Second last, we have Talonflame with Incinerate. If you're ever going to use Talonflame in PvP, Talonflame is deadly in the Great and the Ultra League, specifically the Ultra League. You need to have Incinerate. This is a community move, so of course you can evolve to get it in 
the future makes you get incinerate on your talon flame super deadly and finally sylveon recently has been doing very well with its recent community move of psy shock so if you are running sylveon great ultra master league makes you have psy shock gives it great coverage and it's a quick charging move that does a decent amount of damage so sylveon with psy shock great choice but again this is a community move that's pretty much the end of it guys if you've realized i've said that pretty much more than 80 percent of these moves other than the ones for the legendaries are past community moves that pokemon learned during community days meaning that in the future most of you will have the chance to go ahead and evolve the middle evolution into the final evolution to get these legacy moves on these pokemon so be sure to check out the website i did link below take a look so you can get a good idea of what community moves happened in the past what pokemon have had community days so that you can save those pokemon and wait for events i will announce the events pokemon will announce the events i will let you guys know when there's a chance to evolve these pokemon so you guys can be ready because these are definitely moves to get but i hope this shed some light on some of the best pokemon to use your elite charge jam on in the end guys you know if there was one pokemon that you have that you know you saw that i mentioned in this video and you're like hey i think this is going to be a good choice for me i think this is what i want to do go ahead pull the trigger in the end your elite charge and elite fast jams are getting a lot more use if you go ahead and use them instead of just saving them forever and forever as there will always be opportunities in the future to get more elite charges and elite fast tms and then use more so be sure choose a pokemon that you saw in this video that you say hey i kind of want to try this legacy move i kind of want to try this pokemon pull the trigger use the tm and then you can go and try out this pokemon guys i really hope this video helped you out comment below if you have any questions or any suggestions for other trainers below about any legacy moves you've used and that have been very useful for you so you can help out other trainers who are deciding what to use your elite charge or elite fast tm on guys i appreciate you watching this video we're gonna see you in the next one fall from tips baby peace